So you're very welcome to another episode of the Slip Cordon here on Cricket Leinster TV. I'm very glad to be joined by the head coach of the Leinster Lightning, Nigel Jones. Nigel, great to see you. How are you getting on? Uh, thanks, Peter. Uh, thanks for having me on, first and foremost. And um, yeah, I, I guess like many people at the moment, um, in terms of the process we've been through with lockdown and, and trying to ease and come out of that, it's had its ups and downs for us and, and, and just trying to manage... Um, day-to-day -day life with having three kids and my wife's been working for the days during the week. So lots fallen back to me, but look, the weeks have been passing and I know we're getting closer to hopefully some form of cricket, which is, which is exciting. And like you say, it, 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 I suppose that the first thing for everybody really, this has been carried out over Zoom. Everyone's getting used to it. Zoom is the, is the new go-to for everybody. Um, how have you found the, 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 the so-called spare time? You, don't, you have three kids, you probably don't have much of it at the moment. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, look, it, it has. It's fairly busy when we, when we get to Monday morning, and, and, and by the time we get to Thursday evening, is sort of the, the bit where I've been hands on in terms of the, looking after the kids with their homeschooling requirements. And, and the little man, the youngest, um, he's only just two, so you can imagine he's a handful. So juggling that while the wife's working, um, it hasn't given me a lot of time during that time of, of the week. And then Friday, I'm trying to catch up with some some email and some admin, and and, and do a little bit of things taken over from the, the lightning perspective. Um, been able to arrange a few Zoom calls, as you say. You know, it's been the it's been the um, I guess the the mode of, of communication for so many people in terms of work and different sporting bodies and coaches and stuff. And you can actually see some real positives that this could be something that can be used and, and taken forward in terms of um, sport and in general. Um, but I know also know there's a lot of people probably getting sick of the Zooms now. And they just want to get back to face to face and, and things like that. So my any spare time at the moment, um, I've, been, I've been lucky enough to, to set up a few Zoom calls for the boys in terms of links to Lightning. Um, we were very fortunate to have a, a guest, a um, cricketing friend of mine, Ross Taylor, uh, agreed to come on with us a couple of weeks ago. And that was a, that was a Zoom call for sort of about 16 day end of the boys in the, in the Lightning sort of main squad, I guess. Um, and also we've, we've been able to use Kevin O'Brien um, with the Bolts boys. And it's just a good opportunity, you know, I thought with, um, with the fact that we're all stuck in our houses at the moment and, um, I wanted to, to, to try and see if we could provide a little bit of inspiration for the boys as much as anything. Um, having the opportunity to maybe pick the brain of someone like Ross Taylor, um, you only have to Google his name to just know how big he is in the, in the sport of cricket. Um, boys obviously would watch him play a lot, um, played against him, a few of the lightning boys that we have that are Irish contracted. Um, so yeah, I, I was pleased to be able to, to get Ross to agree to that. Um, boys tend to really enjoy it. I just sort of set up in quite a casual sense a few questions from me just to ease us in and then it was over to the boys to ask some quite specific stuff either about their own games or just in general and, and Ross was fantastic you know he, he um, phoned afterwards and we had a quick chat following it up at the end of the session and said look I have been waffle and I said certainly not lots of good stuff that came out of that um, that session and the boys tended to react fairly well to it so as much as is trying to provide just a wee gold nugget some information they can take away it's just trying to keep the boys inspired too during these difficult times. And I suppose you mentioned it a little earlier, you know, about uh, something that Zoom might make come into coaching in, in future and, and something that we take forward. It, it, coaching is all about kind of learning on the go and, and picking up new skills and new things. Is this one of the, you know, silver linings maybe of, the, of this pandemic is, has kind of stretched coaches possibly in, in a new direction and, and, and forced them to learn new, new skills and, and new ways of getting their message across? Yeah, I think very much. And I think as well with Zoom, it allows you to probably be in a relaxed setting. You know, you're sitting at home. Um, you haven't had to make too much effort yourself to be there. Um, and you try and keep, obviously, the content of the Zoom in a fairly relaxed nature and, and keep it flowing. And I think that's been something that um, I think the boys have maybe enjoyed is, is the fact that they haven't had to put a lot of effort in, which at yeah. times, you know, if you can sit there, go upstairs, lock yourself away, you've got the opportunity to, to talk and engage and talk cricket. So there's um, one or two lads I can think up. of in that squad who would uh, would appreciate not having to put too much effort in, but I won't, I won't mention any names. <laughs> <laughs> Every squad has those. Every squad yeah. has those. Um, but yeah, you're right. I, I think when we have issues as well, maybe on an island with there's travel involved, and we're mm -hmm. all having to try and come together, and that's not easy. Um, being able to, at times, depending on the message that you're trying to get across to the boys, or just to be able to communicate in general, it's a it's a great tool and something that I think will be planned into into future sessions and, and phases of the year. Um, not so much a thing that you would use in season, maybe when we're busy and we're playing and we're seeing each other so regularly. But when we have that time apart or we're looking to get key messages or a bit of inspiration, I think it's a, it's a good tool to use. 
And and like like you said, that that was kind of for the for the elite lads, for the for the the lightning squad as such. How how can you how can you reach out to the to the younger guys to the to the academy, the bolts, the, the that that kind of cohort of players that are beginning to to show promise and, and looking to come through? Has has it been as easy to to kind of keep them not so much engaged but but motivated during this time? Yeah, a good question too. And we're, that's that's why I was keen to get Kevin. Um, involved Kevin O'Brien involved trying to set up a couple of WhatsApp groups um, there and get some messages around setting up some Zoom calls. Um, I'm trying to be specific with those to the skill sets of, of those younger players that are in the bolts and maybe in the in the academy. We're fortunate, I guess, in Leinster as well. We have a number of our boys that are involved in the Irish Emerging Academy, um, so they are getting cricket, they are getting content during this time as well um, in terms of any links or Zooms or messages. So. You know, we, we have a lot of our boys in Leinster that do get taken care of quite centrally, um, but we also have those guys that are up and coming trying to push into the Leinster environment itself in terms of lightning, bolts, um, and, and other ones that, yeah, you, you reach out to through WhatsApp messages, just touching base with them to see how they're going. Um, at the moment, it, we're getting to that point now where it's almost trying to talk further ahead as clubs are getting themselves ready um, to maybe be able to host cricket again, one-to-one -one basis. Is trying to work around the access, um, getting some sessions booked in for that sort of level of player, um, while the Irish boys that are that are lightning players are getting taken care of centrally. They'll hopefully allow me to, when I can, get down the road to, to offer some one to ones with them and, and get them going. But yeah, Zoom calls very much similar to, to the top squad. It's, it's just been through WhatsApp messages and arranging a couple of performance Zoom calls for them. And how have you found that that kind of that distance um, distance coaching, so to speak? You know, it, it it is something that you know when you're working with a team, you're in the dressing room, you're you're in with, with the environment, you're working, and lads are bouncing off each other. There is that the famous word, the banter. You know that that's what you want. Uh, you know, is is it something that that even for the for a, for a coach, you know, you're still playing obviously yourself, so you know you miss that from from a playing side. Of, side of it but do you miss it from the coaching side as well you know that bit of slagging and joking that goes with it yeah I think that's a big part of it, isn't it you know getting into the sport you know we originally we probably all start playing the game because we enjoy it um, and the relationships that we build and the, and the friendships that we have and it's, it's no different you know at elite level I mean, obviously your skills and your ability will get you into certain teams and environments but you're still going to make friendship you know have friends um, you're going to want to have some banter with them you're going to want to see them and communicate no different it's, uh, it's at whatever level we're talking about, we're all probably missing that. Um, and I'm sure we're all looking forward to getting back to that. It's a big part of sitting in the change room and, and slagging each other off and, and then supporting each other out in the middle. And that comes with the territory. And that's probably been the hardest thing, one of the hardest things during this time is to keep that sort of bond, I guess. Um, that's where it's important to try and communicate and reach out as, as often as we can. It's not ideal, but equally, um, it's, it's all we can do. And we just have to keep keeping in touch and, and looking at the well-being. You know, I've been quite big on that. Some of my messages in with the guys is the, is the well-being side of this, keeping their spirits up, keeping focused on the light at the end of the tunnel to get back out there. I'm um, keeping myself busy, you know, fitness-wise. A lot of young boys have college and study, um, which has been great because it's probably been a, a good distraction for them. Um, so just checking in to make sure but nobody's probably sitting on the, on the couch twiddling their thumbs looking at the wall, that kind of thing. Yeah, it's it's a big thing because you know the the isolation of it is one thing for for perhaps you know for individual athletes they they're maybe used to that but you know for 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 a team for, for that environment that's built and and the team element of it you know you you want to celebrate together you want to go through the training together you want to go through everything like that to to, to get to get to the top. Um, well, you talked a little bit about kind of the the beginnings of of, of entering, you know, back into uh, in, into that environment and, and, and getting back to training in some description. Is there any prospect of of uh, talks about fixtures about playing at, at this point, or is is that is that still something that's down the road for the moment? Is just back to looking to get back to training. Yeah, I, I think so. I'd, I'd like to have some great news. It'd be great to be centre at this stage and. And drop some presents off in terms of right here's some fixtures to come up but you know realistically um at the moment we're still waiting on on the powers that be um to work out what can be possible in terms of games at ip level um, for the senior men um equally like everything all organizations have been affected heavily with budgets um and restraints that will come from from covid19 and everything that's happened so i think at the moment you know without being a bit too doom and gloom there's probably not a huge amount 
on the horizon for, for this summer in terms of fixtures at, at a performance level for the boys. We might be able to squeeze something out if we can get the helping hand of, of, of potential clubs, possibly at the back end of August, just something before we get into the winter phase again. But again, a bit of water has to pass. I think at the moment it's more probably about getting the boys back to some training. I think at the moment they would take that, you know, even if there isn't fixtures as such, just to get back to hit some balls, bowl some balls, catch some balls, and, and let's see where it goes from there. I know there's a lot of talk around the club game, and I think that will be important. Um, you know, that, that's where we, we spread the love of the game and, and the joy of the game comes from. And, you know, at the moment, yes, I could have my performance hat on and be very, very much selfish around making sure that we get as many fixtures in the time left that we can. But, but obviously, I appreciate that the club game needs that. A lot of players will get the opportunity to play there anyway. Um, and then we'll see what happens in terms of maybe the men's IP programme. Hopefully sometime August and early September, we might see some sort of credit at that level again. It'd be great. It'd be great to see that, obviously. But you, you mentioned the, the club game there, and you know the the plan for this year, obviously getting involved with with Trinity as well as the the, the role with, with 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 the Lightning. Was 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 it a, um, a possibility, or were you looking on the the idea of trying to to not keep an eye as as much, but maybe you know be able to see the lads out in the middle uh, that 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 you be coming into contact with with the Lightning? Was that part of the plan, or 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 was it more to do with the coaching side of things that you were you were looking? At, at, at Trinity? Yeah, that, that Trinity opportunity was really um, sort of multiple layers to it, I guess, really. Um, I had uh, Connor Howey approach me um, originally about the, the concept and the idea, and we talked it through, and I thought it was a, it was a great opportunity for many reasons. Um, one, obviously, in terms of professionally, um, it, it, you know, it adds more things to, to me and, and gives me more opportunities in, in different environments that hopefully sure, yeah. add some value and grow. Um, so, look, firstly, I, I like that opportunity. Yes, um, coming on board and, and, and looking at a director's type role with them and how we can attract young students to Trinity in terms of a cricket program and what that might look like going forward was, was quite exciting because I probably had an opportunity to design that a little bit and have some input. Um, so I've enjoyed some conversations and, and we've got some things moving now. Um, and yes, the playing side of it, um, that, was probably, that was very much secondary, you know, in terms of, of the whole overall thing. It was... I'm making sure, though, that when I play, I try and add value, value there and support the players. And I can take learning during the games for them and help the cricket program in general at Trinity. But yes, as you say, you know, my visibility is always one thing. You know, I have a, I have a great knowledge, I feel, um, on, on Leinster players anyway, you know, because a lot of the youth players that have come through the pathway over the years, I've seen a great deal of them come into to Irish youth environments that I'm in as a coach. Um, and also, you know, I'm a bit of a badger. I would look out often in terms of websites and, and I know a, a great deal of people in Cricket Leinster anyway yeah. um, that I would talk to and trust. So yeah, it's another string though. I can get to play against a few of the boys, I guess, um, during that uh, League Cup, but not to be this year um, in, the, in the sense that it was going to be designed. But yes, hopefully going forward over the next couple of years, I'll see this role as sort of two, three year role um, at, at minimum and, and we'll see where we go from there. And it is, it's an exciting role and like it does kind of bring everything together, like you say, to, to, to join, join the dots, so to speak, and, and bring things together. Um, we're looking forward, obviously, to, to getting back playing, you know, it, August may be a potential for that. We're looking back nearly, nearly a year ago now, you know, when, when you came on board and, and got, got involved, just right at the beginning, at the, at the, at the takeover from, from, from Albert, obviously, was the, was the Middlesex game and, and, and the, the big crowd that was attracted to that. Is that something that kind of whetted the appetite to, to see if something like that, obviously, this is a changed circumstance this year, but something like that as, a, as, a, as an annual fixture or, or something that could be grown in the, in the Lightning program year on year? Yeah, like it, would be, it would be fantastic if we could be able to facilitate something like that on, on an annual basis. And, and like full credit to, to Philip Smith's vision there and, and everybody that was involved. You know, I know there's a great deal of people involved in making that happen. Um, a lot of unsung heroes, like anything, and they don't just happen those games. So I know as well that a lot of work will go into to trying to host them. Um, it's certainly something I know has been talked about and the players ultimately as well, the players themselves, you know, absolutely love that, that opportunity in that game. And wasn't it brilliant to see so many people there um, supporting, the, supporting the boys on, on that fixture and the weather played its part. You know, the atmosphere was fantastic. And it just showed you, you know, from a cricket lenses perspective um, and a lightning perspective, what, what we can do, what can be done um, and the profile that can be raised around, around cricket in general. Um, and, and that's inspiring. You know, there have been youngsters there um, that will end up playing for the Lightning one day that we're watching. 
Um, and they'll remember those kind of games. And I think that's important too, is to give them something that really inspires them. And a big marquee fixture around other fixtures is, I think, really important. So, yes, fingers crossed. It's certainly something I would love to see more, more of as well. And obviously, one one of the big draws, I suppose, from the Middlesex side that that day was uh, Paul Sterling, and now coming back and, and and being involved, and he'll obviously be involved with the, with the night squad and and and, and things like that. There's a there's a, a healthy competition going to be building. It's it's such a shame, really, you know, the the, the timing of of this because you know we we as a as a as an organisation and as a team with the Lightning, you know, we've been we've been good. We've been we've been. Dominant, it's fair to say, uh, for for many years. But there's there's some good teams coming together, and and it's going to make for a really competitive interprovincial setup, really, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Um, basically, with with Paul's coming back to the, to the Knights, the work that they've been doing, obviously, the last few years, um, you can see that starting to, to come forward for them, especially in the white ball game. Um, the Warriors as well, you know, they can be a dangerous side on their day, and, and certainly a bowling tack perspective, you know, that can be a tricky one with them. Um, but obviously with us, you know, yes, we've been really dominant, you know, from a lightning group since, um, I guess, the reintroduction of the, the, the end of pros, I think 2013 it was. I happened to be a player playing against the lightning, I think, in the first ever game at the Hills. <laughs> um, so it's amazing how time moves on. I think I just retired from Ireland. Um, and I think that was one of my first sort of representative games, shall we say, after that. And yeah, that was a great occasion, that first game in the Hills. And, and probably a fantastic match, actually. And probably kick-started off the, the campaign really well. But yeah, from a Lightning, a big thing I've noticed since coming in the role is trying to get away from the games we've won and the trophies we've won and, and actually look deeper at the performances, you know, the individual performances and, and, and actually, when, if we are winning, how well are we winning? Um, what, are, what are the areas that we can improve and move on? And I think that's what we have to start focusing on because I heard a lot about it as, a, as somebody on the other side of the fence about the trophies. And yeah, but ultimately, at the end of the day, you're only playing against who you're playing against. And that's no disrespect to anybody. Um, they're getting stronger, so we'll have to get stronger. But ultimately, we should be doing that without, without the, the, I guess, the gauge of others. You know, it's down to us. So I've been doing a bit of work with the boys, and I've seen a few things through actually during the lockdown. Just looking back over the last three years around our B20 game in particular, um, we talked with the players in the winter about it, um, the guys that weren't contracted and busy away with Ireland, and, and how we can make some improvements. And I think that's a big thing that I'm hoping to bring to this group when we get back to training grounds and, and get fixtures we can start to move on those areas. And it, it really is such a shame, you know, because like, like you say, every, everyone had such such high hopes and such plans for, for, for the season and what was going ahead. And then not, not, to, not to mention all those plans and the COVID-19 situation and everything else. And then now all of a sudden we've had six or eight weeks of, of glorious sunshine and the first prospect of, of uh, cricket being played and, and the weather has turned as well. So it seems like the fates are conspiring against us in all forms at the moment. <laughs> It's been amazing, isn't it? This, this fell of weather, I think, since we, we locked down in late March or something, you know, up until June, basically. Um, and in early June, it was fantastic. You know, we've had a dry spell, and that's been hard, too, looking out the window or being out the back, thinking, oh, wouldn't it be great to be playing some cricket? And I know everybody would be thinking that, that's a follower and a supporter and a player of the game. And yes, now we're into that. Technically, into summer, we've got the weather has returned. Um, I'm sitting here talking to you, looking out the window, and you probably can't hear that, but there's rain pelting on the on the window as we speak. So, yes, back to back to porridge for the moment. Oh, that's so. it. it. It's got to be with the days when we sit, sit around all the different grounds wait, waiting for the rain to stop. But uh, it, it is funny. And, and I know I can't delay you too much longer because, in fairness, you do have a, a ballet class to get ready for, I believe. It's not your own, I, I hasten to add. Yes, yes. No, I, I don't have to get the tutu on, thankfully. My, um, my oldest daughter, uh, Emily's 10, she's been, um, again, Zooms have been great. Um, we've been able to keep some things that she would have been interested in going. And the tutors have been keen to do that. So she has a ballet lesson coming up here at 5 o'clock. So she'll be doing that probably right behind me in this room. So, uh, yeah, she's been looking forward to those. And, and I suppose, you know, just before I let you go, that is one of the, the silver linings of all this. You know, when, when we talk about, you know, the cricket summer and the cricket season, we're talking about the weather and things like that. But basically, you know, traditionally from April to, to mid-September, that's, that, that, that's where we, we leave our better halves and, and we disappear for, for the summer and, and, we, and we say hello to them again come September. We have had this opportunity now to, to, to spend time together and, and do things that we, we possibly wouldn't have. And I suppose we've got to take the positives from from a bad situation 
Yeah, hugely. I think um, we've been forced into this situation. All of us um, have had to deal with it in whatever way we can, and we've probably all had slightly different issues to face. Um, thankfully, in the Jones household, our health has been good. Um, we've been able to yeah, spend some quality time together as a family, which we haven't had really. Um, you know, we get a week or two here and there in terms of this kind of time when we get some annual leave booked in. But as you say, yeah, April to middle of September, year after year, it would seem. And, and since I've had kids, it's been extremely difficult. But, you know, we accept it in this house. We know what it is. Um, we get on with it. But it's not to say it's easy. It certainly isn't. I have to reintroduce myself to my kids come September and, and have to remember I've got a wife there too. So she's very understanding, but it does take its toll. So this has been, this has been great. I don't think we'll ever get the time back. Um, but I have to look at it from a... Uh, perspective of just time with them and that's where I probably use the word great um, but in terms of everything else yes frustrating obviously and would love to be back at the cricket ground and can't wait to get stuck into it but as you say we have to take the positives when we can. Well that's it that's I think we're rattled up there we take the positives from it but uh, we all can't wait to get back out there and uh, wait for those clouds to clear and get back out playing in the sunshine. Uh, Jonesy thanks a million for joining us here on the slip cordon really appreciate you taking the time.